the Romans, a bunch of well-dressed thugs who could write well but couldn't think, who borrowed practically everything. They laughed at the Africans' concept of Christianity. The African was practicing and not giving it a name. This is why you don't know, know nothing about the African origins of Christianity. This is why a whole lot of people will not read Ben Yarkinen's The African Origins of the Major Western Religions, Africa Mother of Western Civilization, a Black Man of the Nile. Because he's telling it like it is, but you also will not read white radicals who identified Africa as the origin of the great religions of the world, especially Alvin Boyd Kuhn in his work, Who is this King of Glory? And shout out the third century. We have dealt with John Jackson, another radical black historian, with man, God, and civilization. We let some of our great scholars die in hunger, die wanting for friendship. Now, having devoted my greater portion of my life to scholarship and teaching and digging up information on African people and trying to make African people face reality. I have often said a point that I wish you to consider. I didn't have to do it. I chose to do it. And if I had to do it over again, I would do it better. But a lot of talent other than the talent to teach and to research. I've never met a rich man who had a better mind than me. So if I wanted to succeed as a rich man, I could have done that. I never met a crook who wasn't a fool. I could have been a good crook if I chose to be a crook. I chose to be a teacher of African history. I chose to look in the Bible where I couldn't find my people. I started looking for them in the world, and I didn't stop until I found them. And I know why they are left out of the Bible. I know why all the angels are white. You mean to tell me God is merciful, God is kind, and not one little brown or black angel sneaked into hell? I ain't buying that. <laughs> now the Bible that you get so dewy-eyed over is one of the greatest pieces of propaganda ever written. If you want to read the Bible, why don't you read the Bible one day and read Mein Kampf the next day and see the comparison? That's hard on your mind. Because you think if you don't have Christianity, Islam, or Judaism, you don't have to have spirituality. I've got more spirituality after I put all of them down. And I've got more religion after I put all of them down. All right, now let me conclude something that has no conclusion. We have to look at the impact of Europeans on Africa, all impacts have been negative. The Romans laughed at the Af early African Christians. Finally, for political reasons, they stopped killing Christians and became Christians. I'm saying the Europeans became Christians for political reasons, as the Arabs became Muslim for political reasons, and the, as the so-called Jews became Hebrews for political reasons. People use organizations for political reasons, and what we get so dewy-eyed and think we're dealing with all the truth. If you look at indigenous African religion, belief systems, if you look at the idea when Africans had no churches of any consequence because these fools came here and said, this is the house of God, and the African looked at that church and said, if God who made the wind, the spring, made the ocean roar, and you're going to tell me he can fit into a little thing you call a church? That is no house of God. So some of had the common sense enough to, buy, to move away from it, and some had the common sense to burn it down. I'm saying that you are closer to God when the further way you get away from organized religions that are all handmaidens of conquest. The Roman Empire <laughs> developed during the early period of Christianity. Remember, the Roman Empire started 
in Africa. It rose in Africa. It fell in Africa. A lot of people need to stop reading some religious books and read some straight history without fable, without supposition, without myth. Read straight history. Read the Mediterranean world in ancient times. She's a racist, bigger, but her chronology is good. And there's a good history of the Europeans trying to move out of Europe into the Mediterranean to find something to eat to put on that gosh darn awful European food. <laughs> he has solved his problem at the expense of other people. The slave trade liberated Europe from the depressed economy they had created with the so-called crusades and through the famines and the plagues. Europe always solves its problems by preying on people outside of Europe. They are in a position right now that they have betrayed true socialism, which was not of European origin in the first place. And some people are confused between Karl Marx and Groucho Marx. <laughs> I think a lot of people are Groucho Marxism instead of Karl Marxism. They're funny people. <laughs> and if you think that that system started in Europe, no system as humane as socialism could have started among a bunch of icebox people who pay on their brothers for their breakfast. Read Palm and Colson's work, the history of the modern world, especially the early chapters. Now, the evidence of Africans in the New World, the evidence of 1,000 years of civilization before slavery, all of this I'm not discussing because there is no time. But when the Romans disgraced themselves in the mismanagement of Christianity, they created a vacuum. Islam moved into that vacuum. The Africans thought that Islam would get the Romans off of their back. They were right. Islam got the Romans off of their back, and the Arabs jumped on their back, and they're still there, <laughs> using Islam to justify it. Now, the African military man, because we are the greatest fighting machine in the face of the earth, if we ever discovered this, people are going to start running. Under proper leadership, proper inspiration, properly equipped, the black man is the greatest human fighting machine God ever created, if indeed God created it. I think the gods of Africa created it. Once you lose track of your heritage, you lose track of your liberty in this world. The Europeans doing the slave trade not only read the African out of history, they colonized history, they colonized information about history, they colonized image. They colonized the image of God. Who told you Christ was white? He was born in that part of the world predominantly occupied by non-European people. So you should not get into the argument about whether he's white. All you have to say, was he a Greek? No. Was he a Roman? No. But these were the only people partially white in the area at the time. If he wasn't a Greek, he wasn't a Roman, he was one of those other people. You don't have to argue about the shades of color. So far as you're concerned, once you establish he was not a woman, he was not a Greek, your conversation is over. If somebody else want to argue about his shade, well, that's, that's their problem. Then if you got a problem with color, then you got a problem with your mother and your father. You have insulted your mother and your father if you don't like what they gave you. I wear mine like a badge of honor. I dig it. I wear it well. All right. Love it.